Hi, Emma. Good morning to everyone. So, today we are discussing the remaining topics in current electricity. Okay. In yesterday's class, we are discussing Ohm's law, current density, and ohmic conductors and non ohmic conductors. What is meant by Ohm's law? What is Ohm's law? At constant temperature, the potential difference applied across a conductor, ends of a conductor, is directly proportional to the current passing through that conductor that is V is proportional to I that implies V equal to I R is the our ohms law R is the resistance ok electrical resistance. So what is meant by ohmic conductors the conductors those conductors which obeys ohms law are called the ohmic conductors otherwise non ohmic conductors that means it obey which obeys ohms law means it executes V equal to I R condition it satisfies the conductor will satisfy the condition V equal to IR is called the ohmic conductors otherwise non ohmic conductors. So the examples of ohmic conductors are all metallic conductors are ohmic conductors and non ohmic conductors means those conductors which do not obey the ohms law is called the non ohmic conductors and the examples are alloys, transistors, diode walls, triode walls all are the non ohmic conductors. Next one current density current density is j j equal to sigma e is our current density now today we are discussing what is meant by resistivity and we are also discussing the resistance in yesterday's class resistance is nothing but a resistance v equal to ir r equal to v by i it is the ratio of the potential difference applied across the ends to the current flowing through that conductor that means r equal to v by i and its si unit is ohms okay so, in, in today's class, we are discussing resistivity. What is meant by resistivity? Resistivity of a material of a conductor can be defined rho. It is mentioned with rho. In today's class, the resistance R equal to rho L by A. This is our resistance. Okay, in this uh, rho is the resistivity, L is the length of the conductor, A is the area of our cross section. In this rho, what is meant by rho? Rho is the resistivity of the material of a conductor. So, resistivity rho equal to, we can take value m by n e square tau. m e square tau. m is nothing but a mass of the electron and n is the number of free electrons per unit volume. e is the number of free electrons per unit volume. n e is the charge of the electron and tau is the time relaxation. Okay. So, this is the resistivity. So, it is the resistivity is independent of dimensions of the conductor. That means independent of the dimension of the conductor means it does not depend on the length, area of cross section, etc. The resistivity depends, the resistivity does not depend on dimension of the conductor. That means the dimension length, dimension means length or uh, area of cross section, whatever it is. That does not depends on the ratio, does not depends on that dimensions that is length, area of cross section, etc. Resistivity of the metals increases with increase in temperature. That means the resistivity depends only on the temperature. If the temperature increases, the resistivity is also increases. So, the formula resistivity can be written as rho suffixity. That means temperature at T degree centigrade. That means resistivity at temperature T degree centigrade will be equal to rho naught. That means the resistivity at a temperature 0 degrees into 1 plus alpha T is the resistivity. That means the resistivity depends only on the temperature not to dimensions. So, in that resistivity formula we can use just temperature terms that is nothing but a rho suffix T will be equal to rho naught into 1 plus alpha T. Here rho T is the resistivity at a temperature T degree centigrade and rho naught is the temperature at 0 degree centigrade and alpha is the temperature coefficient of the temperature coefficient of the material of the resistivity of the material temperature coefficient of the material resistivity of the material alpha is the so if alpha is positive for metals and negative for semiconductors and insulators and resistivity alpha where alpha is the temperature coefficient of resistivity of the material but here that alpha value becomes positive when we are considering that material is metal okay so, the alpha is negative, we are considering the material is semiconductor or insulator. So, the if resistivity, resistivity is low for metals and more for semiconductors and very high for alloys like nichromium, these all are the resistivity conditions. So, what is meant by conductor, semiconductor and insulators? 
So here we are observing some conditions. So this is, this is the upper level and this is the lower level. So the electron reaching the gap between valency band and electronic band. So valency band, this is the valencing band, this is the conduction band. Conduction band, valency band. So the gap between conduction band and valency band is very high in case of insulators. That means insulators the gap the conduction band the valency band and conduction band gap is very high that means the electron does not reach from valency band to conduction band when we supply some energy to that position of the, to the electron in the position of ground state but in semiconductor material the distance between valency band and conduction band is when is small when compared to insulators so in this we are giving certain some amount of very small amount of energy to the electrons they reach to the conduction band so these are nothing but a semiconducting materials but in metals conduction the conduction band and valency band are overlapping to each other so there is no energy is required to move the electrons from ground state to the excited state that's why we are separating three metals or uh, that means conductors semiconductors and insulators once i will repeat it what is meant by a conductors, semiconductors and insulators? We have two types of bands, valency band and the conduction band. In case of we are considering insulators, the energy gap between valency band and conduction band is very high. In this the electron we are giving certain amount of energy in the ground state of the atom but it does not reach as the excited state. Because the gap is, the energy gap is very high, that means that is a forbidden gap, that is the forbidden gap. So the type of material is nothing but a insulator, they can, they do not, they did not produce any electric current, that means there is no flow of charge from ground to upper level. But in case of semiconductor, the valency band, the distance between valency band and conduction band is very small when compared to the insulators. That's why we are giving certain amount of energy to the valency band electron, they reach the excited state. That means they can produce some energy, they, they move from ground, ground state to excited state and then produce current. That means flow of charge is done by giving certain external amount of energy. So in our electronic devices, we are mostly, we are using semiconducting materials, gallium, silicon, we all are using we are all are using semiconducting material that means we are giving certain external amount of energy to the ground state of atom they goes from ground to excited state and then current will be produced that's why the semiconductor materials are mostly used in electronic devices that means the germanium silicon are used to prepare the diodes diodes are used to prepare transistors transistor to amplifiers amplifiers to other electronic circuits are prepared by using the semiconducting material but in case of metals the conduction band and valency band is overlapping to each other. There is no forbidden gap between conduction and valency bands. Then there is no external amount of energy produced to move the electron from ground to excited state. That's why the metals are good conductors. So all metals are conducting element. Conductors means they, they individually produce their current. That means there is no gap between conduction and valency band. Okay. That's why the metals semiconductors and insulators. So the resistivity of the metals is very small very low but the semiconductors is very high and uh, high more than when compared to metals the resistivity is more in semiconductors and very high in alloys like nickelium that's it okay so once i will repeat it resistivity resistivity of a material can be can be defined as rho equal to m by n e square tau here m is the mass of the electron and e is the electronic charge and n is the number of electrons per unit volume and tau is the relaxation time. In this it is the resistivity is independent of their dimensions that means dimension of the conductor that means the conductor length and area of cross section may depend on you know, the resistivity ok and so next the resistivity only depends on the temperature that means the temperature will increase the resistivity is also increases by using the formula rho suffix t equal to rho naught into 1 plus alpha t here rho naught is the resistivity at temperature t degree centigrade and rho naught is the temperature at t equal to 0 degree centigrade and alpha is the coefficient of the temperature of the resistivity of the material that alpha the coefficient of temperature of alpha is very positive alpha is positive when the we are considering the material is metal that means conductor is metal otherwise 
we are considering the material is semiconductor or insulator that uh, coefficient of temperature alpha is negative value and the resistivity is very low in metals and more in semiconductors and very high in very high in alloys like nickelium this is the resistivity and next we will discuss the next one